they can be found in about half of the drinking water in this country and in some of our foods. I'm talking about forever chemicals. And now the Trump administration is trying to roll back the strict reporting rules that President Biden implemented. Those rules would have required manufacturers to report the level of PFAS chemicals, also known as forever chemicals, used in manufactured goods, in wholesale trade, in waste management, and in utilities, just to name a few. So before I go any further, and you're going to want to hear why the Trump administration has decided that they're rolling back these rules and how you can now participate, I want to thank my Paid Facts HQ subscribers for voting for this story overwhelmingly as the bonus for the week. If you want to vote on next week's bonus story and get access to other perks from me, including our private live event, which is happening this week, just follow these easy steps and become a paid subscriber too. Now, it is because of the generosity of my Paid Facts HQ subscribers that I'm able to report the news for you every single day. So without them, this page would literally go away. If you want to help support my work as well, please consider becoming a paid subscriber. Okay, so let's start with what the hell are PFAS or forever chemicals? Well, their technical name is perfluoroalkyls and polyfluoroalkyls. PFAS is sort of the general term for thousands of different synthetic chemicals found in, at this point, everything around the world. They take a really long time to break down. The usage of some of these PFAS chemicals have been phased out here in the United States, but they definitely still are being used. They've been found in various products and industries since the 1950s because of their ability to repel oil and water. They're used in things like Teflon nonstick products, stain and water repellent, in fabrics and carpet and cosmetics, in paint, in cleaning products, and in food packaging and firefighting foams. Because the chemicals have been so widely used, the Environmental Protection Agency has said PFAS chemicals are found in water, air, fish, and soil. And the Centers for Disease Control says while their use is certainly declining, PFAS chemicals are definitely found in all of our bloodstreams from adults to newborns. PFAS chemicals have been known, depending on your level of exposure, to cause reproductive, developmental, and hormonal issues, along with some cancers and increased cholesterol levels. Take a breath. I know. Okay, so let me take you back to 2023. Congress ordered President Biden's Environmental Protection Agency to create a new rule that required manufacturers who use PFAS in their products, including importers, to electronically report information regarding PFAS uses, production volumes, disposal, exposure, and hazards caused by the PFAS between the years 2011 and 2022. But since that rule was published, the EPA has pushed the deadline for these manufacturers to actually report their PFAS uses twice. They haven't been required to do it yet. Now, fast forward to two weeks ago and President Trump's EPA says they don't want to go forward this Biden era PFAS reporting requirement. So based on stakeholder feedback, aka all the pushback they were getting from the manufacturers who put these forever chemicals in our food and water, and because of President Trump's executive order that demands deregulation, Trump's EPA now says the Biden reporting rules are unnecessary and will cost small manufacturers way too much money. Trump's EPA argues the Biden era reporting rules would not provide any valuable data anyway, and even if there was valuable data collected, there's no framework in place to utilize that data. So those rules should go. It's also important to know that within the last few weeks, the Trump administration has also decided to rescind and reconsider a Biden EPA rule that would have limited the use of four specific PFAS chemicals in our drinking water. On top of that, the Trump EPA has, within, again, the last few weeks, approved the use of two chemicals that are definitely considered PFAS chemicals to be used in lots of places, including in our crops for oranges and tomatoes and lettuce and almonds, broccoli, potatoes, peas, and oats, to name a few. I could do a whole separate video about those two moves. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But back to this general PFAS reporting rule, because it's sort of the big one. Instead of going forward with the PFAS reporting rules as they were written by the Biden EPA, the Trump EPA is going to still require this reporting to be done, but they've added several new exceptions for those who don't have to report. Manufacturers who would be exempt from PFAS reporting include those who use PFAS in mixtures or products at a really low level, importers who don't know that they're sending products to this country that contain some amount of PFAS, certain PFAS byproducts, and research and development chemicals that contain 
PFAS. Those are just some of the things that no longer would have to be reported to the U.S. government. Now, here is the most important part of this story. The Trump EPA cannot just wave a magic wand and make this happen. This EPA proposed change to the PFAS reporting rules is currently open for public comment. So if you have something to say about this, right now is the time. That comment period is open through December 29th. And if you want a link to add your comment to this proposed rule, or if you want to see how you can reduce your risk to PFAS chemicals in your own home, I'm going to email all that information out to you in my next Vax HQ email. So make sure you sign yourself up.